third episode of Cookbook. Remember, you're not meant to watch this series as a series. You're just meant to watch it dip in and out if you don't know how to do something. Alright. So, in this one, as you probably gathered by the title, we are going to be making a GUI shop. Alright. So, we insert a screen GUI. Um, into start GUI, and then you also then you insert a frame. Okay, just move the frame to somewhere. But then you know, seven. Not oh, no, wrong seven. Just seven. Okay. Um, so you're going to have a shop which, when you click it, you click the open button. It opens up a new frame. Okay. Right, so let's make it a bit smaller. Let's make it 50. Oh. Let's make it 50 50. Um, let's make it look, you know, semi professional. So we make that background a bit transparent. That. Um,. And then to this, we will insert a text button. To the size, you just fill up the entirety of this text button. So you go one zero, one zero, and set its background to transparent. Shit. Uh, meant to be doing it on this one. Nice one. background transparent make the text white um, now I am going to quickly turn off Skype notifications um, all right if this is this is the account you need to contact me on a uh, if you want to Ask questions. All right. So make the uh, make the text like that. Set the text scale so you don't have to work out what size is best. Make the text white, and there we go. That's our button. All right. So first off, so it, uh, now we're actually going to make the shop. Um, remember, this is only if you don't know how to use the API, so I'm not going to explain anything great length. Uh, you should really already have a shop set up. This is, you know, pure. Just making shit happen. All right. So let's make it look semi uh, professional again. You make that back. Uh, transparent, make it black, and there we go. Let's insert a text label, which is something you can't click on. Uh, but it looks cool. I'm gonna, this is going to be a really in depth guide on how to make a great tutorial. Uh, great. Um, fact, nah. This is going to be pretty in depth. So if we just, if we just center it. So the middle of the page. Oh no! What's in that? Uh, make it transparent to back. Uh, shop. All right. Um. So I'm going to get this shop to sell guns. Aerial, aerial, bold. Okay, so aerial is a nice font. Aerial, bold, not shop. That's our standard shop GUI. Um, all right. 
So now let's in our, let's insert a button. Remember, I'm not going to make it look pretty. I'm just going to show you the scripts you need to insert. Um, text button. All right. Cool. And I want you to insert a value into it. Of one. Let's find the value. Number value. Value one. Okay. Um, now set the text alignment to left. Make it back. Uh, make the background completely invisible. Again. And make the text visible. Just want to get it around that white area here. Make the size a bit bigger so you can see it. Let's call this by my gun. $500. Oh, what's that? No, how am I going to do this? So at the moment, what I was thinking is when you hover over it, it will show you a photo, photo of the gun you're going to buy. And I um, thought that'd be pretty cool. But... Let me just pause. All right, yeah. So um, we are gonna do this. All right, so let's just call it by gun one. Uh, one Set it to zero dot three down the page. No, but no zero dot two. That should be. Then change the value again to. And if you put it um, 2.5, oh no, 3 even. This is by gun 2. And that will be for a bit more. Alright, uh, there's a text scale, I don't want that. So in this GUI, I'm just going to show you how to do with three guns. The code I'll show you will be, you'll be able to use it for all the guns. Okay. This is once I'm just setting up the GUI. Alright. If you don't know how to make a leader for app script, uh, leader stat script, um, go watch my last, my, I think it was my first cookbook tutorial. Um, I'm going to pause real quick, make one off screen. I want you to make a leader stats which has a value called money. I want you to set that value to 2000. Alright, see ya. Alright, so I just scripted that real quick. Just make sure your script looks something like that. Um, Alright, now I want you to. There are only two more things we're going to do before we actually get into. First off, I'm going to open the GUI. I know this will be a two part cookbook. I'm going to release both parts tonight, however. I just want to keep it nice and short. Um, if you just make this, I don't know, 5 by 2. This is a gun. Uh, remember, if you don't want to sell guns, it's fine. You can. The script's applicable to many things. Um, all right, I'm going to move it to five, I'm going to move it to three, no, I'm not, I'm going to move it to one. No, I'm going to move it to two, how do you like that? 1.5, that might look better. <laughs> all right. And then insert a text label and just call it name. Uh, oh, don't. Let's call that 
title, let's call this name. Once again, background visible. Make it white. Oh. Now that's how you make it white. Um, leave the text blank. Uh, set the size to. Alright, yeah, leave the text blank. Set the size to 36. Position. I think I think I put that five. All right. So first of all, let's move the frame off screen. So set the position to minus two. Now in the text button, set a script, a uh, local script, because uh, it has to be done on the client side or it won't work. All right, so script dot parent mouse button one click connect function right, and so this will fire whenever it's clicked. That's pretty straightforward. Are you downloading something? No, I'm not. Why is the internet so slow? What are you using, Chrome? Uh, yeah. Can you use Safari, please? Alright, sure. Um, where was I? Sorry about that. I'm trying to edit that out. And if I fail to edit it out, <laughs> um, if I fail to edit it out, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any uh, editors on here, and I couldn't pause. All right. Anyway, so yeah, this will fire whenever that's clicked. Um. So. We want script. So we want the text of this to change. So you can turn it back in. Equals. And so I'll show you now. I'm just gonna play. If I click it. It looks like I can slide the GUI back in. So, now we're going to use tween. So, script dot parent dot parent parent. I'm going to call this one frame one. Frame one, tween position. Okay, so tween position takes many arguments. However, we're only going to be using one. Okay, and so we write U D R. Uh, is it U D R I M or U D I M two dot new? And then we're going to write where we want it to go. So zero dot one zero zero dot one zero and that should work just fine. Um if it doesn't I really want to check my email again. If it doesn't work, as always we'll go back, see what's wrong, debug it, unless you've watched that. Turning tutorial of mine, which went horrendously. So there we go. It slides out nicely. So what if we want to slide it back in? Well, I'm going to use an if statement. 
So if script not parent dot text is equal to this, then I'll execute this code. Else if script parent dot text equals this. Uh, of you don't actually have to. You could write else, and it would work fine. But I just write use the uh, else if bad habit. I guess it's sort of a good habit. Because if that code's not doing what it should be doing, then I'll just break the game. Sorry, that if that code's not doing what it should be doing, then um. You'll know, you'll never, you won't know, or it'll be harder to debug. Um, copy this, put this in here. The indentations don't actually have any effect on the script, or the script performance, it just makes it easier to read. Oh, what's wrong with this? Um, all right. What do you mean you didn't expect to identify? I don't understand. Oh, I do need two lines, don't I? Oh, that's silly of me. I have to be sandwiched between two lines. Alright, let's solve the bat problem. I actually get that problem a lot and really pisses me off. So there we go. It works nicely, but if you click it too fast, then uh, it never, it won't. So yeah, and that is how we're gonna open it. Right. So now, for the purposes, okay. So we're going to be using script uh, buttons equal script dot pet. Oh, we need actually a buy button. Uh, I didn't fix that onto here. Uh, I'm sure someone probably noticed that. I was like, wow, where did I put my buy button? <laughs> Don't post in the comments about the buy button. It really annoys me when people do that. Um, not posting the comments, just uh, errors which I then correct myself. On. So, alright, let's write. Um, let's make the text clear too. Purchase. Alright. Buttons equals script dot parent. Get children. Right. So let's make a table of all the prices of guns. Okay? In chronological order, obviously. Otherwise, they'll break. So 500, 1000, 2000. Prices equal 500, 1000, 2000. Now we need to make a list of the names, so we go names equal. Obviously, you're going to have to configure this for your own game. Gun. Gun one. Gun two. Gun three. All right. So that's prices. That's names. And now I want you to just, you know, type in gun. I'll get some guns. I think I've got some in my models. Uh, be very careful when getting a free... If, uh, if you've got something, you can already give them. That's, that's better than what I'm doing. But these guns, I know, don't have uh, any viruses in because they're made for me. Um, oh, I shouldn't check my sky. 
So I'm being really impatient today. Come on, you said clock. Nope. All right. So I want you to put these guns into a server storage. It used to be lighting, but now it's server storage for because it's designed for that basically. Um, oops. Oh, bloody hell. Right. So, okay. So, guns are there. Guns equal. And now you need to give a list of where the guns are. So, game.workspace. So, uh, not workspace, sorry. Server storage G36. Okay. Clock. Um, and finally, MR. Alright. So that's good. So now we do. Um, I'm going to put it in a wild true do loop, and I'm not sure if you need to. Um, just, just be on the safe side. But no, okay. So, I'm going to stop this episode here. And I'm then going to commence recording the second episode of Cookbook. Alright, we'll see you next time.